This MVD is great, but it's nice to have something to offer these other people as well. So percutaneous techniques, as uh, expected, they're better in V3 than V1 or V2. I don't uh, usually excuse do Excuse me, Dr. Sara, yeah, we cannot yeah. see your presentation, please. Oh, okay. It says I'm screen sharing. Uh, new share, let's try that. Okay, I'll try again. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see now. Oh, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so V1 and V2 are not great for um, a percutaneous, especially V1. The V3 is a, you know, very good as, as you expect. You come through the frame and ovale. Um, radio frequency lesion, I've got my own biases against, but people who do it are, are, are swear by it. So the concept proposes that the compound option protectors of A, Delta and C fibers for pain are blocked at a lower temperature than those that are carrying tactile sensations. So theoretically, you can get pain, uh, remedy of pain, but without uh, losing touch. And you can also alter the division you might try to get into. And some people, no, I mean, as you've seen, there's very variable results, but some people re report excellent uh, results such as this one. Glycerol, the concept is that it selectively injures already damaged myelinated fibers, leaving a pool of normal functioning fibers. Uh, requires egress of CSF to be effective and you sit the patient up to put the uh, glycerol in. Obviously, you're trying to keep it in the trigeminal cystern. Some people look at the size of the cystern um, uh, using Omnipake and then injecting that amount of uh, glycerol. Uh, I'm not a fan of glycerol either. So, and interestingly, Sweet notices many decades ago, see there's a puzzling discrepancy on the reports using glycerol to treat trigeminal neuralgia. And as you can see, I really these ones are, are not good. It doesn't, uh, but as I said, the literature can be very variable with these percutaneous techniques. Balloon compression um, and the right in some people's hands also excellent results, but not with everybody, as was mentioned before. So the concept proposes that the large myelinated fibers are injured, and you leave the small myelinated fibers preserved. So the corneal reflex is mediated by small myelinated fibers and can be preserved potentially. But these patients will almost always get numbness. The percutaneous techniques are quite cost effective, uh, especially if you're looking in uh, developing nations. You know, glycerol, the worst of them, was the most cost effective uh, treatment uh, for and pure trigeminal neuralgia. So um, now I wasn't very good at seeing it on the x-ray and I kept thinking, you know, sometimes we'd be there quite a while trying to get in the frame and ovale and think there must be a better way of doing this. And so we would get, um, so we're doing it this way now for about 10 years. And so I present sort of the first five years uh, data. So we did CT stealth acquisition on the day of surgery. I do all the registration and preparation before the patient even enters theater. So most of the work's done before the patient even comes in. So stealth axiom, but I have been using it with brain lab as well, four French catheter with a 0.75 mil balloon, 14 gauge true cut needle, some omnipake, half strength in the image intensifier. So I prepare it all beforehand. So you can see that the axiom wand has been put in the true cut needle and I've marked it just with a bit of stereostrip to tell me the length of where I am. So it tells me I'm exactly at that needle tip. So I know where I am at all times. Um, and the balloon is marked also with the, uh, as projected, the balloon's projected beyond the true cut needle and the marking is made to let me know where the balloon is as well. And then I do my registration. I try to get my uh, one millimeter accuracy. So see a bone windows on the CT. Uh, I try to get my one millimeter accuracy circles in the region of the frame and ovale. And I line them up on the guidance views so um, I can uh, get direct entry. So this is it um, here. Um, as you can see, the nurses, uh, they love me doing these because they don't have to do anything. They're just gossiping there in the corner. Um, but it's very quick, very quick procedure. So that's pretty much it. And then we uh, take an x-ray just to make sure that the balloon form is good. And when I know I'm in a good position, uh, well, we get that pear shape, which is as good. We often get that diving reflex where they become quite bradycardic. Uh, so I always give them um, uh, atropine uh, before uh, the operation. Um, now you can see that there's a divide or a line right down the middle of the face uh, where the patient flushes. 
And um, I also, uh, I think that is really associated with a good result. So in the first five years, I did 101 procedures, uh, very variable um, age groups, very variable pathology. Some, most of them were typical TN, and I'll come to why they came to this in a minute. Um, atypical features, tumor, MS, post-stroke pain, a melanoma excision on the face. She lady had horrible pain. She was always in hospital on ketamine infusions. And uh, patients, 12% uh, uh, of them had had pr multiple previous procedures. Why do people come to have a balloon? Well, a lot of people came to me because um, uh, they just, um, they didn't want to have an MPD. They've been to see other people and they knew that I did this and they just didn't want to have an MPD. Uh, age comorbidities was um, part of it, um, it has certainly. Uh, multiple failed procedures, you know, I had one man who had an MPD and is pain free for four hours and then um, his surgeon asked me to do a percutaneous procedure. Self-employed and people with young children, uh, I think this is a, a real society um, push. They felt that they couldn't take time off work. The children needed them and they didn't want to undertake any risk. Um, and so they they were opting with their feet. Yeah, and so we're seeing that in Gamma Knife as well, that people just not prepared to undertake risk, particularly if they're in this situation. Severe intractable pain, um, like uh, we use Gamma Knife or, or offer people Gamma Knife, but not people who are in severe intractable pain because it takes such a long time to work. So those patients who come into hospital who have absolutely terrible pain and uh, we really, you know, have them on all the infusions and the state is trigeminous. They can't talk, can't eat. My last lady was down to 36 kilos. We've just got to try and fix it quickly. Um, as I said, risk averse, people just, the risk averse or wouldn't have an MVD was a lot of them. Uh, tumor MS and uh, people who were happy with having balloon before and wanted it again. So, um, and uh, people with uh, type one and two, uh, type two, type one and type two trigeminal neuralgia, I had five percent complete failures. I don't know why they had, I felt typical TN just didn't work and I couldn't make them numb. Don't know what that was. Eighty-eight percent of them were off medications and pain-free at the last uh, review. Uh, Seven percent had a reduction in medication. Of the patients with atypical features, and I've got, a, as I said, very good team around me with atypical facial pain, I actually uh, felt that I did, I did help people, um, uh, but I failed in a third of them. MS, um, these are the patients who come to me regularly, pretty much every year, and they have me on speed dial. So I just said, you just, just call me because, you know, they have a terrible life as it is without having this horrible neuralgia they get. So um, they, uh, I do quite a few of those now, and uh, we, we do well, but they have a high recurrence rate. Tumor patients, so I had um, uh, two meningioma patients in the cavernous sinus with nasty pain. One of them um, did well, the other one was just stupidity on my part. I should have realized that the tumor was through the foramen ovale. So I probably should have used glycerol in that case or a radio frequency, but um, anyway, uh, loot from it. The patient with a melanoma where almost, and it, she didn't have perineural invasion. We, we had all that checked out. It was the nerve was injured when they excised me uh, melanoma. She she did really well. She hasn't bounced back into hospital. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, stroke, so that central pain. I don't think um, that the percutaneous techniques are great for central pain. You probably need a central treatment for central pain, like a, um, a thalamotomy for pain, gamma knife thalamotomy. Um, which I haven't done, but um, I'm uh, looking at a patient for that. Um, I had one excellent response, um, and what, but recurred resistant to all therapy, and then one just complete failure. Now the numbness we expect, and I, but um, and most people it doesn't bother, and it doesn't seem to correlate with the length of time you blew the balloon up or the age of the patient, which is interesting. It seems to be very unpredictable. So um, four percent were still densely numb at six months. Um, uh, a station tube dysfunction. I've been checking everybody for that. You know, that that feeling that their fullness in the air, the air is not quite clearing. Pterygoid masseter dysfunction of 4%. I did get in a corneal abrasion. It's not supposed to affect the corneal reflex, but I did have a patient with a corneal abrasion. I did have arterial bleeding in one patient, but it didn't uh, uh, translate to, uh, to any problem with them, thankfully. Failure to cannulate and 1% uh, of, uh, I think was a problem with my registration that day. Hepatic eruption we know can occur. And temporary six nerve palsy in 1%. And I think that this happens, the balloon is quite round and I think I'm just in too far and I'm getting into the uh, cavernous sinus. 
area and I really need to withdraw a bit. So when I was first starting out how to do it, uh, it, was take, it took a long time. But now it's really quick. So it's like 12.3 minutes from the time the patient enters the theatre to leaves the theatre. So in conclusion, um, uh, it's a, it's an, the balloon compression using true cut need and axiom guidance or brain layer guidance is an effective and efficient way to cannulate the foramen ovale for percutaneous treatment of facial pain. You can use the same technique for glycerol and also sometimes, particularly in atypical facial pain, I might do a trigeminal block with local anaesthetic. So I can also use it for that. Uh, I understand this, uh, a man in the Netherlands using doing facial um, or trigeminal ganglion st stimulators. I've got to, uh, uh, I'm keen to go and visit him to see how he gets them in, but technically potentially I could get them in this way, but um, I need to um, do some more work when we can travel. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for a nice talk. Now I will uh, ask the audience if they have any questions. Uh, excellent presentation. My question is that uh, what was the reason of percutaneous procedures in patients with multiple sclerosis and tumors? What was yes. the reason that you did? Well, multiple sclerosis patients, um, they get also get very bad trigeminal neuralgia. So not all of them, obviously, but when they get it, it's usually a plaque in the um, nerve or in the brain stem. And uh, it is really um, has a high recurrence rate. And obviously, well, I mean, there's a uh, Brogy recommends still doing an MVD, but um, you know, most of them have no vessel. And so I use percutaneous uh, techniques. The one patient we had with nasty edema following gamma knife um, was, a uh, was a MS patient um so i mean we do do it um in ms patients but i am a little worried about their immune response same with doing thalamotomy for tremor in ms patients um yeah their immune system is not the same as the rest of us and uh, they seem to have quite a different uh response um sorry the other question was um uh what was your other one sorry it was with stroke was it or tumors tumors you mentioned oh, some tumors, tumors. Yeah, so that's some um, trigeminal neuropathic pain, but it's not trigeminal neuralgia. So it's caused by the tumor in the cavernous sinus affecting V1, V2, V3, and horrible, causing horrible facial pain. So um, I was asked to see them and asked whether we could do anything about them because they were just unmanageable after radiation and everything else that we'd had to try and control their pain. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, I have a question for you. Um, my question is that, uh, you know, once you do the balloon compression and when the pain comes back, does the pain come back with a vengeance? Because in my experience, I've found that although the balloon compression initially works beautifully for the patient, but when the pain comes back again, it's worse than the pain they had initial um, pain. Uh, do you have the same experience? Yes, I have had a few people like that. I have had a few people, but most of them um, will say, look, they'll get on get on to me very quickly and say, look, my pain's starting to come back. I'm starting to take my medication. I'm, you know, they're so scared it's going to get back like that was before. So we usually intervene before it gets to that point. Um, yeah, the MS patients, definitely. Yeah, that's why they, you know, they just have me on speed dial because when they get bad, they are just horrible. Um, and it recurs very quickly in them. But yeah, the trick, I, as I was saying before, is that the numbness is a big thing that people, that you, you know, there's a downside of doing this procedure and it's so hard to predict, but while I've got the numbness, they don't get their pain back. So yeah, it's a good side of it, but yeah, I've certainly got one or two patients who are very troubled by the numbness and don't like it. Sarah, thank you. This was a wonderful presentation and gave thank me you. another idea of how you can do a balloon compression because I always had issue with doing x-ray and finding the foramen ovale. So thank you so much for introducing me, me to the <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye all. Bye. -bye. Bye.